Hello everybody, this is AJ with Raconteur Animation, and today we're doing a short tutorial on compositing. Compositing is when you want to bring in a 3D object and plant it inside a photo uh, to make it look like the object is actually there in the scene. And today we'll be using the Arnold renderer to make it all happen. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a background object real quick. And I'm going to go down here and create an Arnold texture image. I'm going to go down to the open network editor button and we're just going to click on this node and we're going to add an image. We're just going to use this parking lot image. And we're going to sync it to our viewport as well so we can actually see it while we're working. And then we just apply this image to the background. All right, so now we have our background image in the viewport, and we can kind of use that to start working on uh, setting up how our composite's going to work. So the next thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add a floor object. The floor object can help you uh, set up the working plane that you're going to have your composite of. So the next step really is just trying to line up the plane with the ground in the image as much as you can. Right about there is probably good for now. Again, you can always come back and adjust this later. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create the object that's going to be composited into this environment. And I'm just going to make a simple cube for now. There, we've created a nice little rectangular prism, and we're just going to kind of sit it on the floor object and kind of just move it into our scene there. I'm going to create a material for that object. Now I'm going to go ahead and create our Arnold Sky object. And I'm going to change this type to Physical Sky. So this will basically plant a sun into the scene and that will be our main source of light for the whole scene. Uh, since this is an outdoor image, this is perfect for this scenario. Now before we go into the settings of the Arnold Sky, we're actually going to bring up our Arnold IPR scene. And there we go. So right now we're actually getting the cube rendered out as well as our background. You'll notice that the floor object is kind of blocking the, the main image and not really providing much for our scene right now other than just being there. What we actually can do to fix that is we're going to go down here and create an Arnold shadow matte material in the surface tab and we're going to apply that to our floor object. And now, as you can see, the floor object is, is gone from the viewport, but it's still active in our scene. And this floor object is useful because this is actually what's creating the shadow for the cube. Uh, if we hide the, the floor from the viewport, um, you're going to see that the shadow actually disappears from the, from the cube. So it's good to have that, and the shadow mat really helps. All right, now that we have our Arnold IPR pulled up, and it's looking pretty good right now, uh, we can actually start adjusting our settings and seeing them being adjusted in real time. When you look down at your settings, you'll see how you have a lot of different options here. The main ones you really want to keep an eye on when you're adjusting your scene is the elevation and the azimuth. Options like sky tint, sun tint, and uh, sun size can also be really useful in adjusting your overall scene. Certain settings like casting shadows is also a really important setting to keep an eye on as well as all these different lighting settings for your overall scene. Since the Arnold sky is actually lighting the scene, uh, a lot of the lighting options can be adjusted here. Coming back to the top of the settings list now, we'll take a look at some of those other settings that I mentioned earlier. Elevation is pretty much what it sounds like. It's just, it determines the height of the sun in the sky, how high the sun is, and that will create different looks uh, for how it casts shadows. Um, so if we boost it all the way to 90, there will be no ca uh, shadows cast because the sun is right over the object in the scene. Um, but if we bring it back down to, let's say, 35, now the sun is n more at an angle and uh, a, a larger shadow will be cast. The azimuth meter of the Arnold Sky object determines the actual positioning of the sun in the sky. and that controls the angle of what the shadows cast at. So right now in this scene, the sun appears to be on the far left side, casting a shadow to the right. But if we adjust this a little bit up, now the sun, now it looks like the sun's more into the top left of our scene, kind of just out of the corner there and creating that nice shadow. 
there aren't too many examples in this photo, uh, but usually with outside scenes, you want to look at other places the shadow is being cast and try to recreate that shadow with your object because that actually kind of tells you where the sun is in the actual image. For instance, in this photo, we can actually kind of tell by this light post over here that the sun uh, is casting a shadow to the right here. So the sun is actually is most likely in the top left corner um, of the image. So with that information, we can kind of create uh, an accurate shadow. So with that in mind, we can actually kind of recreate an, an accurate shadow for the image that it's in. All right, so now I adjusted the shadow a little bit so we can kind of get the full gleam of the left side of this cube, but the other side of this cube is pretty dark, and that is where the shadow will lie in, this, in the scene. The sky tint and sun tint options allow you to kind of adjust the scene for the time of day it might be, or the area, or just the overall feel of the environment. So if we wanted to create like a end of the day sunset kind of look, we can actually probably change the sky tint to a orangish like color, an orange yellowish. So now we adjust our scene to make it look like it's in the middle or late in the afternoon. So next I'm just going to make a few more adjustments to the cube in the actual scene. And we'll kind of have it play with what's actually going on in the image that we have uh, selected. All right, so I took the cube and I turned it into a car shape, add some wheels, and uh, I did that to kind of play with the idea of the image. That's basically uh, a little car that's uh, parked in one of the parking spots of the parking lot. And obviously this still looks pretty fake, but that's just because it's a block with some uh, cylinders on it for wheels. And with materials like uh, metal and, uh, and rubber and adding some real shine to an object, uh, that will obviously make your, uh, your car look way more realistic and way more in place for the, an actual image. And with that, that's basically the, that's the basics of compositing. Um, it really is just about uh, trying to match the lighting of an image uh, to the 3D objects that you're putting in your scene. Um, with uh, indoor scenes, uh, it's essentially the same process, um, but instead of adding a physical sky, uh, it's more about adding certain lighting points to kind of match the sources of light in a given room or area. Wherever light is coming from in an image is basically what you want to match uh, uh, in terms of compositing for an indoor room. And it's actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea to basically recreate the whole room with not only a floor object, but also um, some walls as well to make sure that you're getting the, uh, the angle of the objects you're putting in your scene correct. Perhaps it's something we can get into in a future tutorial. Um, but with that, um, I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful uh, in getting an idea behind what compositing is like and how it could be useful for certain projects and certain workflows. It's a really cool way to create art and help with certain problems um, in art making. So I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful and uh, have a good day.